Thank you uh, sa ating uh, praise and worship team for leading us uh, sa ating pagkanta at pagpupuri sa Panginoon. We praise and worship the Lord today, I'm sure from our hearts. And God reminded us also dun sa ating mga songs, in our songs, who He is in our lives. Amen? So, before we start, before I start sharing uh, what God wants us to hear today, let's all pray. Father God, we just want to thank you and lift to you, Lord, everything today, O oh God. I pray, Lord, Father God, that all the words that I will share today, O oh God, will be only coming from you. I pray, Lord, Father God, that all the wisdom and knowledge will only be coming from, from you. And I pray, Lord, Father God, that, that Jesus Christ increase while I decrease, O oh God, and use me, Lord, as a, a channel of your blessing today. And I pray, Lord, Father God, that let me be an empty vessel, O oh God, that, so that you can use me fully, O God, today. Lord, prepare each and every one, O Lord. Let your anointing be upon me and each and every one of us, O God, so that we'll be able to listen, receive, and be blessed today with your words. Thank you, O Father. We lift to you everything. And in Jesus' name, O God, we come against any work of the enemies in this place that will disrupt your word. And we come against any uh, any disturbances, O Lord, in in our work, sa amin pong mga devices, O God. And I pray, Lord, Father God, that all of us, Lord, will be focused only to you today at this moment. Maraming salamat po, Panginoon. We give you glory, honor, praise, and adoration. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. So sit back, relax, and uh, open your ears. <laughs> Okay, uh, last week, Pastor Sheila shared to us, we're still in the series of uh, powerful names of God. You know, in the Bible, there's so many mentions about the names of God. So last week, Pastor Sheila uh, shared to us Emmanuel. You know, Emmanuel. So a powerful, of, powerful name of God that tells us that He is always with us. Ang meaning basically ng, ano, ng Emmanuel, God with us. So this was shared to us last week by Pastor Sheila, and we have learned so many things about the presence of God. Actually, I'll touch that also later on sa aking, sa aking pong, uh, preaching. So today, we're still in the series of powerful name of God. So today, the powerful name of God that I'll be sharing to you is Yahweh Shalom. Yeah, shalom. So, ang ibig sabihin po ng Shalom, peace. So, Yahweh God, our peace. Have you heard about Shalom? Parang narinig ko ata yan, I heard that before, eh, may nagtotoning-toning pa sa AM, AM radio ata. No? Shalom. Not fully understanding what's the meaning of shalom. Uh, gusto ko lang siya pakinggan, shalom. So today's, today's powerful name of God is Yahweh Shalom. God, our peace. Our anchor verse will be coming from Mark 4, 40. It says there that He said to the disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And we will read the full text of that coming from Mark 4, 35 to 41. Ang title po niyan is Jesus Calms the Storm. Jesus Calms the Storm. So Mark 4, 35 to 41. Let's read. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him, and a furious squall came up. And the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? 
He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet! Be still! Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. It's, it's a powerful story of, of, of Jesus. You know, whenever we read the Bible, of course, especially if it is Jesus, He's telling us uh, an example. And as always, whenever we read it about Jesus, the example is the first example is Him. That's the main purpose why He came here on earth. He's God, but He left His holy abode just to come here on earth so that He can be a human being like us. So that He can, he can you know, teach or preach what He teach or walk what he teach or walk on what he preaches so this is a synoptic gospel which is if you go to the bible you will find it also in um, in luke 8 and in matthew 8 so ano po yung ginagawa ano ba, what, what's happening here so uh, they just finished um, teaching si jesus christ just finished teaching on the other side uh, and then they went to this uh, to the other side uh, to to again uh, go to another place para po magturo so that to teach and actually say say isang say isang scripture it will tell us that after that nagano siya nag uh, nagpalaya siya ng demonyo ng demon possessed so basically ang nangyari po diyan merong bagyo there's a storm and the disciples were very afraid takot sila kasi di ba sino man di matatakot sa boat na who will not be afraid on a boat that is swaying and, you know, in the verge of probably sinking. So, they ask Jesus to, because they, they have foreknowledge that Jesus can, you know, do miracles. So, they, they ask Jesus, Jesus, look, look at what's happening. It's, 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 it's having, we're, we're having a storm and you're there, you know, sleeping in a caution. So, with this, Jesus Christ woke up and commanded the storm to stop. And it did. So, today we're going to learn about peace. Yeah. Peace. Peace. We know, we know that about that, no? Even before in the church, no? We know about peace whenever there's a time that you're going to say, peace be with you. So peace. So today we will have a deeper understanding of what peace is and what Jesus, God, is offering to us in the area of peace. In the dictionary, peace means freedom from disturbance or tranquility state or period in which there is no war or a war has ended. Yun ang definition naman ng peace. Eh, no? Pag sinabing may peace, there's no war. Kaya nga, di ba, meron tayong before na peace sign, peace, no war. No, but, but what really peace means now that we are with God, now that we are Christians, now that we have accepted Jesus Christ, we all need peace. Amen? Because when there's no peace, ano ba yung hindi ka mapakali? Yes? No? When, when, when there's no peace, you're struggling. So, but what really gives us peace? Ano ba yung nagbibigay talaga sa atin ng peace? Is it job security? Oh, I have... Uh, I have job, 10 years, 20 years, so I'm okay. Is it when you're receiving your salary on time? Is that what you give your give you peace? Ah, okay, ako, uh, like what Angie said, no, five five months. Ano, up, it's really hard. No? I experienced that, not receiving salary on time, and probably some of you here have. Uh, experience that one point 
Siguro norm na rito yun eh. <laughs> Sa UAE most of, minsan no, that, minsan naman may pang sweldo talaga, but you know, especially when there's, um, if the company is a family business, most of the time nandyan yung issue ng pagpapasweldo. Because no one wants to give. For example, brothers and sisters yung ano, may are they don't want to, to, to release money. Is it having quiet surroundings? Yung tahimik yan. Does, that, does, does, is that peace? Yung tahimik, no? Nasa, you're just in your room, no? wala yung mga nagiinuma no? sa kabilang kwarto. Is that peace? Is it a place or region without war or conflict like what I said earlier in the definition of peace? Yan, patulot sa Pilipinas, sa Manila, wala namang gera, no? So, may, may peace sa Manila. Here in this region, there's war that, that is happening. So, is there no peace? Is it a day or week without an aggressive customer? Uh, nasa, nasa, ano, mga nasa service uh, companies. Araw-araw na lang, every day of your life, you have this one person, one customer coming to you at 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> giving you a hard time. Is it an hour or a day without a nagging spouse? Uh, sinabi ko spouse kasi para, para fair naman. Uh, kasi meron nagging, ano rin, nagging husband eh. Oo nga, kaya. But most of the time, I know, wife. <laughs> Is it? Ah, yun na naman. Ako, yun na naman. Yung, yung ano ko, yung yung aking pinag-ubaran daw. Is it? Is peace just an absence of any trouble or problem? May peace ba tayo whenever oh, okay yung buhay? You know, you, you get to eat five times a day. Uh, you get your salary on time. You have a uh, family. Is peace just an atmosphere of quietness or serenity? Quiet, seren uh, there's uh, quietness and serenity. Because the world defines it this way. The world defines it this way. That it has to do with our surroundings. So, pag quiet, may peace. Pag magulo, chaos. No? Because this is what the world tells. And, e and even, the worldly definition of peace pertains to uh, yung walang war. No war or the war had ended. If you go to a beach and go down to a lounger, you know, and sit down and uh, look at the sea, no? Asarap, no, no? Parang asarap na scenario, no? You sit down or you lie down and look at the sea, calm you see. For sure, sabihin mo, peaceful yung place, no? You would say that it's peaceful. Or when you ride a boat, like what happened to Jesus and the disciples, and there's not much wave, waves, then probably you would say that it's peaceful. If peace is the absence of any noise, problems, or troubles, then peace is the product of our surroundings. So, marami. Ibig sabihin, pag nakatira ka sa, sa, tawag dito, sa, sa sharing, sa bed space, for example, or uh, partition, then walang peace kasi magulo eh. I, rem I, rem uh, I, I reminded uh, the time that I was doing that. I think we are 12, 12 in, a, in one room. Yeah. One salon naman, malaki salon. So we were 12. Krabe talaga ng ano. You know, I work from 8, 8 to 5, and then some of them are working in the, in the mall. Talagang pag nagdating, dagasa eh, no? Nagasa talagang, Oy, Frey, kamusta ka na? Kakain tayo. 
Totoo ka, nagigili ka na gano'n, gigisingin ka pa. Ay, kahit tayo. Or gigisingin ka, uy, gising, gising. O bakit? Tulog na tayo. <laughs> so, but when we go back to the passage we read, we just read, Jesus showed us otherwise. Jesus showed us otherwise. Tatanda natin, every time that we read the Bible, especially with Jesus in it, example yung binibigay niya sa atin. He's giving us a model. And here, in this passage, He showed us otherwise. Oh, kakagulo na nga, eh, di ba? Oh, I'm sure in yung faces ng, ng disciples, the faces of the disciples are really worried, no? Eh, Mahana tayo. Sino ba naman ang hindi mawo-worry sa, sa may storm sa dagat? Di ba? Even you're good, a good swimmer, pag matataas yung waves, you can still get drowned, di ba? So, they are they are really worried. But Jesus showed us that in the storm, there's peace. Amen? Though there's a storm, He is peacefully sleeping. Yeah. He is peacefully sleeping. Do you think talagang sleep siya doon? Do you think he is really sleeping? Probably, probably not. Wala naman sinabi eh. Yeah. So, in that time, what I'm saying is, he's still human eh. Napabasa. Get sweat. Diba? Na, ikaw nga, natutulog ka. Sige nga, anuhan ka ng ano sa face, water. Diba? Ma- Alimpungatan ka. You will, you will, you will wake up. You will wake up. But you know, for this particular story, for this particular passage, God, Jesus Christ, is teaching us about peace. That amidst the storm, you know, you can have peace. The seas doesn't need, the ocean doesn't need to be calm so that you'll have peace. Again, I'll go back. Then your peace is dictated by your surroundings. In fact, he even told the disciples in John 16:33 that in this world you will have troubles. Siya mismo nagsabi niyan, sabi niya, in this world you will have troubles. And who is he talking to? He's talking to the disciples. Di ba dapat promises nga eh, di ba? Oh, pag inaccept niyo ako, you will have a good life. You will have all the wealth in this world. Pero ano sinabi niya? You will have troubles. Di ba? Parang encouraging, di ba? <laughs> you have this new faith with you and you came from battles in life and you come to Jesus and then Jesus will tell you, in this world, you will have troubles. Siguro mag dalawang isip ka, teka muna. Is this the right path? Why is Jesus Christ telling me that I will have troubles? He's not telling that you will have troubles personally, but troubles, uh, but personally you can still have troubles, but he's telling that in this world, there's always a pros- pa- pa- possibility of troubles in life. Amen? But sabi niya, there's a promise, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Amen? So Jesus overcame the world. So peace is not the absence of conflict or trouble. How can you have peace? But how can you have peace, you know, with conflict and trouble? Parang napakahirap i-explain. You know? Yan ang sabi ko kanina, I work as a programmer. Sometimes it's very hard to to the illogical with the logical. Sometimes ang hirap ipaliwanag. You know? But God, kay God, yun ang faith ang importante. So, peace does not remove trouble. So, does not mean that when you have peace, there's no conflict or issue. Pag may peace naman tayo sa Panginoon, that means that there's no conflict or issue. While we are still alive, there will be conflicts, there will be issues. You won't have any conflicts or issues only when you have 
when you have what? Eternal peace. <laughs> Pagpatay ka na. Then you don't have conflict, conflict and issue. You're already dead. It's finished. But while we are still in this world, while we, we are, while we are walking, you will have everything. Even our faith will be tested. Even your attitude will be te tested. Even your integrity will be tested. Daily, ah, Daily. Pagsakay mo pa lang ng bus. Yun ang sisiksik sa'yo yung ganun. Your patience will be tested. So wala yung ano, pagpasok mo sa opisina. You know? Everything is smooth flowing. There will always be someone or something that will test your fruits. Yeah, lagi natin sinasabi sa fruit of the Spirit. Sometimes, uh, nalalaglag na yung prutas ko dahil dito sa kasamahan ko. So there will always be these things. Um, example, in the family, in a family, yung, yung, yung ating uh, biological family, you have, for example, you have, you have uh, your parents, you have your siblings. For example, medyo konti kayo, mga dosi lang kayong magkakapatid, no? 12, 12 uh, siblings. <laughs> or even now, for example, you have children. You're, you're a parent, you have maybe three or four kids, even one sometimes, you And, and magulo, maingay, ano ba yung magulo? Uh, there's chaos always running around. The kids always running around. Misa nga, isa lang eh, di ba? Isa lang, ang kadumba, sampu eh, no? One, one child is equal to ten children. So, there's chaos, magulo, maingay. And then, uh, uh, um, even, even, in, even in siblings, marami rin, no? I remember nung, nung, uh, nung nandito yung uh, aming family, uh, yung aking in-laws, and sister-in-laws and uh, uh, tita ko rin galing from uh, from the from Canada. So bahay talaga ang dami namin, no? So maingay, uh, kwentuhan, no? Of course it's all in, in a positive uh, manner, no? But you know, sometimes you say no, paano ba ako makagawa, no? Uh, what what how can I finish accomplish things kung you know, even yung mga kids maingay, minsan na ano ka na, di ba naririnig ka na? How can I finish my, uh, my uh, yung, uh, lessons, lesson plan? For example, si Teacher Aisa. She needs to finish. I know, teachers, they need, they need to study uh, before, uh, before teaching. So next day, for example. I, I, I have experienced that kasi nagturo din ako for one year. So every day you have to, to study. Kasi kundi, ano yung tuturo mo kinabukasan? Diba? Magulo, maingay sa family. But you know what? Even with that, there's peace. Bakit kaya? Tika mo mapagsasabi ni Pastor, ba't may peace doon? Because you have peace in your heart. You have peace in your heart because your loved ones are with you. David, ba yun? Your loved ones are with you. It's a great blessing whenever you are with your family. Amen? 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 Amen. So kahit minsan naririndi ka na maingay magulo, you're still blessed because they are there. They are there. You can see them, you can feel them, you can uh, compare it to when they are, for example, in the Philippines or somewhere else. So this is what gives you peace. And what is that? Peace is not about quietness. But peace is about Assurance. Hindi insurance, ha? Assurance. Ay, mga talaga, so rich din, ha? Assurance. Yeah? Assurance that you can, you can, you know, express your love to your loved ones. They are there. Kaya nga, minsan, di ba, kahit maingay, hiyan mo na. It's better maingay, it's better that they are noisy than they are not there. Amen? No. Mar marami na homesick. So, my point is, peace is not about 
surroundings. Peace is about assurance. Like what we had, like what we had and what we will have from the Lord Jesus Christ. Assurance that He will be there. God will always be there for all of us. I remember also in my company, sabi mo kanina kay Angie, uh, before I moved to another company, same situation. Talaga napakahirap. It's very hard. One month, walang salary. Why? Because you have to pay so many things there. Kaya nga, sabi ko kanina, you know, pag pwede kang mapagod, meron ka huwag kang mag-resign. <laughs> Because there's so many things to pay for. Uh, even in my company, my current company, uh, hindi naman siya nadidelay na salary. But I, I was there for uh, 2009. 2009, I was hired by that company. Uh, 2011, they started terminating employees. So every year, every year, every year, every year, they terminated uh, employees. Uh, my, my, even my own uh, group, my own, te own team, we are uh, 11 before. 11, or I think, or 12. Now we're only uh, three. Uh, plus one manager. So, you know, every day, no, I think we're more than 12. I think we're more than 12, yes. So, every time there's termination, one of your colleagues is, you know, taken away or terminated. Not, not also my, my division or my, my team, even the, the other departments. We have a facilities management. Uh, I think that's 1,500 staff. They were all terminated because they were outsourced. Kasi nga, headcount. No? Kailangan Emirati, mas, mata, mas mataas ang count kaysa sa expats. So one way of doing that is to outsource people. So it's, it was always like that. Every year, every year, every year. But I thank the Lord because, you know, I, I, I lifted up everything to Him and, and gave me peace. And whatever happens, you know, even though there's chaos in my company, there's always terminations, there's always changes, changes in the management. One day, your, your subordinate becomes your manager. <laughs> so, eh, no? so, chaos and uh, um, issues and termination. But I thank the Lord because there's peace that, we're, that I have. Because if not, then probably I'm paralyzed and you know, from 2011 up to now, maybe I'll be uh, you know, ano yung reklamo? Magre-reklamo ka nalang na magre-reklamo. And you will not be able to move forward in your faith because you will say, oh Lord, I'll be doing this when everything becomes okay. You know, I will surrender my life to you or I'll really be 100%. I'll always attend worship service when everything is okay in my company. May mga ganun ka pang banat eh. No? But if it doesn't happen, what, you, what will happen to you? I thank God because the peace that, that uh, Jesus offers, uh, I was able to receive it. Because of that, I was not paralyzed. And to continue work, as to work as if I'm working for the Lord. Amen? So lahat po tayo dapat ganun. We have to work as if working for the Lord. Very important po yan. I was, I was telling uh, Pastor Shane when we were talking yesterday, you, know, you shouldn't look at yourself, even you're working at this, uh, uh, yung uh, sa small lang na, na position, or lower position, because God can promote you. You know, we have so many testimonies, so many of them are, are working on a lower position, but because they have work, as if working for the Lord, eh, pinopromote ng Lord. Uh, one, one, si Lynn, kilala niyo si Lynn, no? Si Lynn was, was the caretaker of uh, Ate Angela before, uh, who is the daughter of Pastor Willie. Uh, Angela died already, and Lynn uh, moved out already. And Lynn now is a, is a teacher in a special, uh, anong tawag doon? Special school. Sa special school si Lynn. 
and she's in gems. So she's, she's, she's really loved by the people there kasi nga iba yung kanyang attitude and character. So, you know, God, God can promote you. you know. Just you need to be trusting to the Lord and uh, do work as if working for Him. So, why is peace important to God? Bakit ba napaka-importante ng peace? In fact, peace in the new uh, in the NIV, uh, the, this word is found 247 times, 155 times in the Old Testament and 92 times in the New Testament. Why? Because peace is the restoration of wholeness and completeness and the blessings and a blessing to new creations. Diba? So, sino yung new creations? Tayo po yun, nung inaccept natin si Jesus Christ. Diba? Sabi, you will be a new creation. The old, and go, the old is gone, and behold, the new has come. So, tayo po yung new creation. So, may, very important po sa Panginoon yung peace. So, where did Jesus get or got his peace from during yung etong uh, etong storm. Kasi nga sabi ni sabi ko kanina, Jesus probably might not be sleeping but teaching. So teaching us where do we get our peace from? So where do we get or where Jesus gets his peace from? Number 1, or the first one is the presence of God. As I mentioned earlier, tinuro na po sa atin last week din yan ni Pastor Sheila about the presence of God, Emmanuel. But here, we can see that Jesus prayed to God. Nanalangin si Jesus Christ no? to, to the Lord. And prayer is one of the uh, things na ginagawa natin to, 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 to symbolize or to, to show that the presence of the Lord is near. His peace was not the absence of the difficulties, but the presence of God. Jesus Christ's peace, and tayo rin, tayo rin, uh, uh, His peace is not the absence of difficulties, but the presence of God. So the presence of the Lord it's very important for us to have peace. Parang yung sinasabi ko kanina, no, in our family. You're, you have peace because you can see your children or your child or your siblings. That's peace. Why you have that peace? Because that's assurance. And whenever there's God's presence, meron pong assurance. There is an assurance that we are right with God. Kasi kung walang presence of God, ibig sabihin, we are not right with the Lord. Amen? So Jesus Christ exemplified this by always praying to the Lord. Everywhere, meron kailangan si Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus Christ is also God. Right? But He taught us that we need to always communicate with the Lord. And prayer is not one-way communication. Hindi yung prayer, eh, like ka lang healing. You pray ka lang dahil healing ka. No, prayer, you can, you can talk to the Lord. Pwede ka kang magreklamo eh. Huwag mo lang, what you call that, uh, yung, na, ano nyo yung, hmm, yung pwede kang mag, uh, magsabi sa Panginoon na, no Lord, uh, ganito yung, yung issue ko, ganito yung, what do I need to do? You know, sometimes you really just need direction. So, asking the Lord for, for, for wisdom. Philippians 4, 4 to 7 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. You know, Apostle Paul is telling you, telling us that the Lord is near. 
And there's when the Lord is near, there's no anxious, anxious, uh, anxiousness, but there's only peace that transcends all understanding. When you say transcends all understanding, peace that is unexplainable. Yeah, that transcends all understanding. You cannot explain. There's no logic on it, but it's just peace that comes from the Lord. So the presence of God is very important to have peace. Pangalawa po, faith in God. You know, Jesus Christ knows God. He, he is His Father. But again, He showed this to us by having, having faith in Him. He had faith in God's power. He knows God. And you and me should also know God. And how do we know God? How we can have this faith? Because you cannot just have faith without anything, no? It should come from something. Somebody invited you, that's the start. But your faith cannot be based on someone else's testimony. But your faith should come from your what? Should come from your knowledge and experience of God. Kailangan may experience natin si Lord. At the same time, we should know about God. From where? From the Bible. I can present the Lord to you. The one who invites you can share the Lord to you. But you should be able to experience God personally. So, through the Bible, by reading it, living it, and experiencing it. He knew that God the Father was with him. May knowledge. He knew his Father was in control. That's faith. If you know God that has control in your life, that is faith. And when you know that God is in control, it gives you what again? Assurance. <laughs> Assurance. He knew his father was always right and he knew his father could be trusted. Do your best. Let's do our best and let God do the rest. Let's have faith in what God can do. But faith is not something that you'll just, Oh Lord, kayo na pong bahala sa lahat and not doing anything. Even, sa area ng, even in the area of giving up vices, for example, nigarilyo ka, minum ka, you're drinking uh, uh, liquor or smoking, you will say na, Lord, bahala ka na, Lord. Ikaw na magtanggal nito. But you're not, you're still buying cigarettes and uh, liquors. No? You're not doing anything from your side. No? Even sa mga interviews, you know, you are always parang, no, oh, matatanggap ba ako? So do your best, study, and attend the interview, and let Confidence of the Lord be with you. And pag nagawa mo lahat yun, let your faith rest on what God can do next. Amen? And that's peace. Because you will have peace that if that job is for you, you will really get it. If God, if God gives you that job, you will really get it. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, sure, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5.1 At saka yung kanina pong binasa natin sa Psalm 23, napakasarap basahin po nun. Di ba? Pag binabasa ko yun, parang nare-relax ako. Relax. Sabi niya kasi, no? Uh, you will lack nothing. Green pastures. He will prepare a table for you. Kain na, no? Amen? So, faith in God. And then, finally, obedience in God. You know, uh, the first time that human being lost peace is when Eve 
uh, nag-benight niya yung apple, ah, hindi yung pala apple, yung fruit. <laughs> That's the first time that human being lost peace. Nung nagkasala sila, when they committed uh, a sin against the Lord, when they ate, Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit. That's the first in the history of man. Yung po yung first time na nawala yung peace. Why? Because they disobeyed God. Kaya nga sila nagtago yun. Why? Because they come to know that they are uh, bare. You know, sin is the ultimate disruption of the peace of God. The problem of sin is not simply that it, not simply displeasing God or our Father, but it is contrary to our very creation. We are created to worship the Lord, not to sin against Him. The purposes for which we were formed and are called to existence. Peace is absent. Peace is absent when sin reigns. Pag may kasalanan po, nawawala yung peace. Naranasan nyo na yun. Have you experienced that? Pag if, if you are sinning, di ba? Okay, if you're sinning with your partner, for example, nangyari, sabi ng partner mo, o oh, wag ka maninigarilyo, naranasan ko kasi nung, high, nung college kami. Di ba? Naninigarilyo kasi ako noon. I, I'm smoking, and Pastor, Pastor Shane told me not to smoke. So, lagi akong walang peace pag magkasama kasi kasi naninigarilyo ako eh. Baka maamoy ako. Kahit pa anong maghugas ka nun, mag, uh, wash, wash your hand. And, oh, naka-chewing gum ka na naman. Oh, chewing gum ka. Mungungyaya <laughs> ka dyan. <laughs> But there's no peace, di ba? Kasi, ano, baka maano ako, baka ma-find out ako. Mahuli ako. That's the same thing with us when we are, you know, we are living in sin against the Lord. You always have this burden in your heart that you will be found out. Actually, you're, you're already found out because you cannot hide anything from the Lord. You're already found out. Probably yung katabi mo, hindi ka pa na-found out. Pero si Lord, na-found out ka na. When we veer off course, choosing to go our own way, you know, when we, when we do our way and go against what God wants us, we lose peace. There will always be lack of peace. So very important po yun. We lose peace when we sin against God like what happened to Adam and Eve. No rest, no peace for the wicked. But, One good thing is, Jesus ended yung no peace. Because Jesus restored shalom. He restored shalom. Kaya nga sabi po sa 7 ng Matthew 24 to 25, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, si Jesus Christ po yung nagsasabi nito, It's like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blow and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Again, assurance that your foundation is on the rock, not on the sand. Not on the sand. So, wherever they're seen, There will be no peace. Sin, no peace. So very important that we always remember that we should kick out that sin so that the peace of the Lord will come into our life. And if you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ in your life, siya po yung solution. Because Jesus Christ restored shalom. So we need to accept Him into our life and allow the Holy Spirit to move freely in us. Amen? So ulitin ko po, 
Tinuturo sa nanggaling yung peace na pinakita sa atin ni Jesus Christ, number one, in His presence. Uh, number two, faith in God. And number three, ob- obedience in God. In closing, the peace of God is a great blessing from the Lord to His children. Tayo po yun. In this chaotic world, every everywhere you look, you go to the news, to the newspaper, last last week, or this week, somebody drove his van to a number of people, 10 people died, I think 16 people were injured in Canada. You know, so many things happening in this world. Now, in, in, in Syria, they're investigating if uh, they used uh, uh, chemical weapons. So, you know, if you look at this and you're not with God, then you will say, what's happening? And uh, I'm doomed. So the peace of God is a great blessing from the Lord to His children in this chaotic world. And it brings with it fulfillment, harmony, contentment, order, and lastly, yung sinasabi ko pa kanina pa, assurance. Fulfillment, harmony, contentment, order, and assurance. And one of the effects of obedience is the blessings of peace. When we obey God, there's always peace in our heart. Kaya nga, Merong plumb line. Ano ba yung plumb line? Yung ginagamit ng, uh, ng mga construction worker to make sure that everything is level. Whenever you don't have peace in your heart, ask God, Lord, am I doing something not according to your will? Yan nga, di ba, sinasabi palagi, uh, is, is the peace of God with you? Uh, when you're making a decision, is the peace of God with you? Because if not, God, you know, you will not have that peace for that particular decision. And challenge for today, always remember that the Lord is near to His children. Nandyan palagi ang Panginoon. Whatever is happening in your life, either good or bad, if, you're, if you are His children, lagi po siyang nandyan. Nasamahan niya kayo. And we just need to trust Him more and remember that He will never leave us or forsake us. He will never leave us or forsake us. And finally, oops, live the life of sin and let the peace of God reign in your life. Live the life of sin and let the peace of God reign in your life. Memory verse for today. Philippians 4, 4 to 7. Napaganda pong balik-balikan. You know, if you're if you're having any storm in your life right now, if you're having any issues, if you're having any problem, magandang pangako po ng Lord dito. Sabi niya, sabi ni Apostle Pablo, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Sabi mo, sa katabi mo, the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.